All right, so there's not really, um, by the way, Kathy Wood, just out of curiosity, she's on CNBC, so anything interesting, somebody let me know what the hell What the hell could she be talking about right now? What the hell can Kathy Wood be saying right now? That's what I want to know. Oh, Biden talking too? I mean, I don't know what she could be saying right now, Kathy Wood. You know, is she saying the same old, spewing the same old stuff? All right, so um, let's, uh, again, I got to remember this is not um, just members here. So try to get everybody just up to date on what's going on here. Um, there, and this is something we've been talking about uh, on this webinar, right? Pretty much the only reason um, trying to, as best as possible here, um, lean bullish, and I'm actually buying, um, been putting on some spy exposure. Uh, today we put on a little bit, uh, what was it, August, in August. Again, you got to forgive me, I don't remember the dates as, as they are and strikes, um, but it's not me all the time pushing the button on these things and working these orders, so I forget the strikes. But um, I know it's August um, they were focusing on today um, into the late afternoon fade. Uh, we wanted to do it if there was weakness off the CPI this morning and a little August exposure. Instead, there was some strength. Um, but we had a little bit of a fade early on so we can play it tactically. Um, and then, you know, that, that fade in the afternoon, it was just the, the flow, the price, it was so lackluster. And um, we put on a little bit of uh, August exposure late. I still have room to add, Okay. Uh, so I'm still looking to add what I'm trying to do. The reason why I'm taking little steps here um, instead of, well, one, because of the lack of sweeper confirmation, in other words, because of the lack of confirmation out of the flow that this market is ready to go, right? That they're buying short-term calls and there's going to be some momentum squeeze. Or if we were seeing some accumulation in longer term strikes. Um, and that would be a heads up that, okay, maybe, uh, you know, we're early here. Maybe things are going to languish a bit, sit around in the range, test lows, who knows, but there's money being put to work in certain areas. Okay. Um, we're not getting anything right now. We're not getting anything. Um, and, you know, it's unfortunate. The good thing, as I mentioned today, is that, you know, you're in earnings season, the start of earnings season right now. So you don't really, you don't really want the quality flow to show up now because you're going to second guess it anyway. You're going to be wondering if they're replacing stock, earnings, positioning, the whole nine yards. Uh, so if we can have our way, we want weekly activity, one-sided action. For those of you who play both sides, either calls or puts, and play off the momentum um, on an intraday and extreme short-term basis, at least for the next couple of weeks here, okay? That's, that's all we could ask for. Um, but as we start to get some of these bigger names, these larger names report numbers, and we get reactions um, across the board, from growth to cyclical to commodities, I think there's going to be a lot of information in all of these uh, post-earnings not just earnings reports, but even the flow and reaction to them, uh, we, we, there are going to be a lot of hints to what things may look like going into the summer um, and even the early fall, okay? Uh, there, there are a lot of things. There, there's a lot of potential out there, right? There's a lot of potential. But one thing you'll learn about it in this game is that potential can lay around and do nothing for a lot longer than all of us would like, you know? Ultimately, you need that catalyst, you need that trigger, and that's where sweeper activity can play a big part, right? That's, that's where the edge, in my opinion, uh, comes from as far as sweeper activity, right? We talk about that a lot. Sweepers are momentum. And when they're either buying calls or buying puts, uh, a lot of times when you get that rapid fire type of buying, that aggressive nature, it's going to generate momentum and, you know, on the bullish side can get shorts to squeeze, get squeezed, can get um, money on the sidelines that has no exposure, force them 
to put on exposure. But without that catalyst, okay, which, and that's kind of what we have right now, where we're coming off a significant rally off the lows, right? Got overheated. And now it's just like drip, 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 drip. And, you know, the drip, drip is a good percentage on the indices because the moves have been so big. Um, but without any any buying or any catalyst, you get this kind of like buyer strike that, that we're in right now, okay? Where does that catalyst come from? You know, that's another thing we, we've been talking about recently. I mean, me personally, and I wouldn't go off what I feel personally, I don't see a bullish thing out there. I really don't. I really don't right now, okay? Uh, but the good thing about that is things change quick in this game, right? Things can change quick uh, from, you know, just ceasefire in uh, Russia, Ukraine. You know what I mean? Um, God knows, right? Whatever it may be. A lot of times you don't, we don't even know of the potential catalyst that may arise. Uh, and then, boom, sentiment and momentum uh, can shift drastically and rapidly, Okay. And if you're not ready for it, it's going to leave you behind, especially if it's, it's something you wanted to participate in. So that's why at the least, you know, we got to stay on our toes and keep our eyes open. What I like to do, I always like to be a little early on any of the initial buying I do, because if, if I don't start early, I'm always late, always, you know? That too cute statement I continuously have been making over the past two weeks. When I say, all right, I'm going to try to nail the bottom right to the tick. You know, all right, I keep waiting and keep waiting. And, you know, you see a day like today, right? It looks awful. Looks like the market's going lower. How can you can't be bullish off a day like today, right? So you wait a little bit more and you find that you continuously push off any action and then when that catalyst and that move comes out of left field right now you're scrambling now you're scrambling uh because you really have nothing so that's why when we when we have these type of uh, setups and and the setup is, is simple okay the setup is not off what we're seeing out of the flow right there, there's nothing there that's signaling anything different it's been the commodity names the new regime names as we've been calling them seeing all the quality buying all the quality order flow and the aggressive money has zero interest in any growth or tech names at a discount zero zero okay you can count literally on one hand of names that have seen respectable bets and we're just talking about respectable bets here. We're not talking about accumulation, which a lot of times that's what you would be looking for when stocks have, have been so out of favor. And, and I'm talking about the growth names specifically, right? Uh, but you got a lot of other things now. You got retail, um, you got home builders, uh, you got different parts of tech, not just high growth. You got different parts of tech that really have looked like crap and are at a discount right now. Uh, but the, the aggressive money has yet to show a real interest in any of those areas uh, for whatever the reason is. And that, that's been the case for months now. This is not something new. This is not, you know, they haven't had an interest in a couple of weeks, all right? What's been disconcerting is that this has been going on for a while, uh, but there's, probably a legitimate reason why, right? We're, we're seeing it right in front of us each and every week that goes by. We're really starting to, to find out why they haven't been aggressively buying into some of these pullbacks. And when we do see buying, they're playing weeklies, okay? So what that tells us is when they come in and step into weakness and they're bombing weekly strikes, okay? So I'll give you guys a perfect example. This here, right? And this is one of the reasons we, you know, we obviously were feeling like this was just all short squeeze. There was no, there was no real betting into this. You know what I mean? There was no real betting prior to this. 
this it was all players positioning to play off the momentum. Okay, whether they were hedging shorts, right? They got caught short and they're sweeping weekly calls or whatever it is, or just you know, players, momentum players, algos looking to take advantage of the squeeze, the upward pressure in, in the price action. That's that's all we really saw here. That's all we saw. This was all short squeeze. Okay, this was all short covering, hedging unwinding of protection that's all it was okay if there was any real buying ahead of it or into it it, we'd be singing a different tune because we'd be we'd be talking about a lot of names on these webinars right there's not too many names we've been talking about um outside of the commodity and the energy names that we've been talking about for months now all right so now i mean for me it's it's this it's simple here right I'm, I'm, I'm putting on market exposure, right? And I've just been playing the S&P 500. Um, I, the earliest I got is June, and that's not from recent buying. That was from buying here. Oh, no, here? I don't know. But somewhere over here, um, I have some June exposure, okay? All that I've been adding recently, I put on some July and of recent August. And I'm, we're probably gonna stick with August um, right now anyway, as far as any new ads, okay? And the reason I'm looking to put on some exposure in here, okay, is based off, not necessarily one thing, but one, one signal in a sense, okay? Two things that add up to a signal. We got, Hedge funds that are net short, and they can remain net short for a while. Okay, we've seen that before. You don't you don't need to get an instant reaction uh, just because hedge funds are short net, as a whole, um, where the market squeezes and you have a whole new bull market immediately. Okay, um, as a matter of fact, they can stay short as even after the market turns for a while, as you guys know. Okay, so you got. A lot of the um, professional money hedge funds, CTAs, that sort of thing that are underexposed, if not short. And you got sharp hedgers who were short, have now covered the short. We spoke about this, right? And are now net long, okay? Just based off solely that, just that is why I've been. Um, building a SPY, uh, S&P 500 position, okay? Now, as you guys know, I'm a big individual name guy. I love individual names. You know, that that's my niche. I'm not a big in, in ETF or index player. What I like to do is have that SPY exposure. And as sweepers are coming in and banging up names, okay, I can look to add on, some exposure in individual names on top of what I have as far as overall market exposure. I am not going to go out and pick those names myself, okay? I'm not going to go out and handicap and think Roku is done going down and start buying Roku calls. That's not just not my what I do, okay? I need to get confirmation from the, the sweeper crowd that there's aggressive accumulation going on in whether it's Roku or uh, KB Homes or some retail name, uh, some underbelly software name. It really doesn't matter, but I need to see sweepers buying new things. One that could guide me to how aggressive I want to be in individual names. The more they're buying, the more aggressive I want to be. Okay. It will guide me where I want to look right? Where's the hot money going next? That's what I'm looking for. Forget about where it is now and where it's been. I don't need anybody to tell me that. I got two eyeballs, okay? I want to know potentially where it may be going next into the summer, late summer, into the early fall, okay? Where's that hot money positioning? Um, And right now, we're not seeing even the start of that, unfortunately. We're not even seeing the start of that. 
What does that ultimately mean? I have no idea. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to mean anything. Okay. What we may see is we may see, um, again, just giving examples, right? Because there's so many different um, scenarios out there. But let's say, for example, you get a ceasefire eventually, which looks like a long shot at this point. But let's say you do get a ceasefire in Ukraine. Okay. What will instantly happen? you'll get the commodity and energy names get crushed, okay? They're gonna get banged over the head if that happens, right? We may see sweepers pop in and start buying aggressively into that weakness in those same names. You understand? So while we're looking elsewhere for, right, maybe they start accumulating growth in uh, tech or any of that stuff, that's certainly a, a scenario and a strong possibility, right? That's why we've been talking about the new regime plays, okay? The problem right now is until we get that break where these things get hit and they buy weakness, you are buying names that have already been lit up with flow and poked to new highs every single day. You understand? So that's why we, it's almost, for me, outside of really tactical trading and that for me right now that's intraday basis at the most the the flow in these names are useless we don't know what's rolling right we don't know what's clean what isn't hey, somebody comes in they buy uh, two million dollars worth of freeport fcx and then you could later in the day you look you could see five million dollars of calls closing that they they bought four months ago you understand? So you have no edge there. Now you get that ceasefire or you get a, a rollover in energy where these things go whoop. Okay. And the longer they do this, the more there's going to be a whoop. They may just come in and buy that. They may just come in and buy that, but we need to see it before we can, we can do anything about it. So that that's where we're at here now you know that's where we're at now i i don't want to get you know i don't want to get overboard just keep buying spy i mean that's not what i want to do if i'm not getting sweeper confirmation you know after i probably get out one more ad um in august calls as far as uh spy is concerned if i'm not seeing sweeper confirmation i'm gonna chill out you know what i mean i'm gonna chill out um and and see what develops from there you know, see what develops from there. But that, that's all I have right now. So basically the only bullish signal for me, the only thing that looks bullish for me right now is that, all right? You got the professional money that usually when they're all on one side are wrong, okay? They are short and bearish and underexposed. And you got what's considered the smart money um, that's, conservative and hedged the majority of the time, unhedged and long. That's it, okay? As we get additional things lining up, whether it's via sentiment flow, we can, we can act accordingly, all right? Um, I was getting a couple of questions like, what would, uh, outside of sweeper activity, is there something where we can possibly look for a shorter term or immediate reaction? Or of a potential signal. And yeah, that, that would likely be something um, we had first go around into the lows. And when I mean immediate, I'm not saying the same day or next day, but usually you see a squeeze over the extreme short term when everything is so um, washed out, okay? And that's a lot of the sentiment indicators we're looking at, okay? All those sentiment indicators that we look at continuously, whether they're flashing bullish, bearish, or mostly neutral, but we look at them every day to stay on top of it, this rally, right, this squeeze took away this bullish signal throughout here, right? Everybody who was short, everybody who was bearish, everybody who spit up longs on a tactical basis, here, that washed it all out. And in my opinion, that's what all this rally was. 
That's all it was, was everybody here caught short, squeezed, covering, and unwinding hedges, okay? So now we're starting to get, we're working our way back, okay? Yeah, like Hussein is talking about too, again, traditional run-of-the-mill surveys, okay? AAII, which people look at in different ways, but it's a survey. We like to look at it bull, bear, um, combined, okay? Here you had, I think it was multiple bull signals, okay? Oh, into these lows. I think, well, maybe two. I'm exaggerating multiple, okay? And then as this rally happened here, you got it back to neutral. We'll look at the indicator. I'll show you it if you want in a second, okay? Um, last week, we came in again. And honestly, I, I think we're going to get a bull signal this week. I could be wrong, but I think we're going to get one Friday. Okay. So at that point, that indicator will be back on bull signal. Right. Uh, here's another thing we were looking at. Okay. I, I'm just, I'm giving you other um, scenarios here, guys, because yeah, this is a tough backdrop here. If you're not willing to be patient um, and sit and let a lot of things to materialize. There's, there's just, there's no catalyst out there right now. You know, there's no catalyst. VIX hits 28. Oh, you mean for a bottom? No, market's closed Friday. Market's closed. Uh, let's see here. What I, oh, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Okay, now the risk. The stuff I'm showing you here, guys, the risk is that you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, and it doesn't come. You understand? That's the risk you run. All this stuff that I'm showing you now, doesn't. they don't all have to line up bullish again, right? They already did. They already did. And, you know, that, that's the thing that, you know, I had trouble to, especially early on in my career, I always wanted everything, right? If this one was bullish, this thing was bullish, but this wasn't, I'd be like, oh, I want that bullish too. Then, then I'll start buying. But you know, it, sometimes you overdo it. So here's something else, right? That um, probably needed to work itself out because of this, the squeeze off the lows. You had a big rally off the lows and you know, across the board, every sector was cooked. Even tech, which was the most hated thing on the face of the earth, right? Think about where tech is now. Nobody wants to touch tech, okay? You had extreme bullish signals into the recent high of, of that squeeze. Where, there's the updated one, right? So this is what I'm talking about here, watch. Tech, here. Okay? So now this is working its, its way back, right? Now you're here at this pace, We'll be at bull signal again in a couple of weeks. Look at semis, same thing, right? So if if you're looking for more of, um, out, again, outside of sweeper activity, you're looking for more of a timing mechanism type of thing. In other words, you don't want, um, you don't, you're not looking to be too early, okay? Maybe you're just looking to put on a trade, right? Then... You don't want to be that early if you're looking to put on just one trade and that's it. Right? Without this, without sweeper confirmation, you want to probably look um, for these things to wash out. And then you really don't need much of a catalyst. It's just, you know, there's no more sellers left over on a short-term basis. And anything can create a squeeze, right? The end of an event. If you remember what created the squeeze, what was it? I don't even remember. What created it? Oh, the Fed, right? The Fed meeting was over? Is that what created the squeeze? What created that squeeze? Anybody remember? The Fed being hawkish created the squeeze? Right, right, exactly. The Fed meeting was over. So that it was an unwind. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. No reason. Um, but, you know, it just, it was overdone, right? Everything was washed out enough to where... Um, they got to go in the other direction and you get people scrambling, right? So that, that's the only thing outside of, in my opinion, sweeper activity that would give you indication that we're closer um, to possibly a move higher. And again, that's just squeeze. That's not telling you 
you know, new bull market or new uptrend. That, that's just telling you squeeze. Um, ultimately, we want to see sweepers come in and start aggressively buying new names. I mean, throughout my career, that's the only thing that keeps bull trends going. Otherwise, you're either in a correction or you're stuck in a range. You know? That's, that's from my experience, okay? And again, it doesn't matter what they buy. It doesn't matter what they buy. It may, they may base, buy a group you hate, but they need, it's new stuff too, right? It's new names. It's not buying uh, CCJ you know, Sweeper 600 at new highs. You know, the aggressive money is finding new names to park money, to position it, right? And the more you see, the stronger the rally usually is, the more broad it is. All right, so right now, from what we're seeing out of the flow, uh, at best, it's telling us that we're probably going to be range bound, right? More tactical moves, squeezes, fades, like we're seeing, right? You get these big squeezes when um, the bears get a little too cocky, when the bulls think everything's back to normal, you get these washouts, and round and round we go, right? Until we reach that point where people are ready to um, get aggressive and put some money to work. So again, those are the things uh, we're looking for. But I, I can only tell you what I'm doing, and what I'm doing. Okay, here, here's kind of what I, I'm best case scenario for me, right? Best case scenario is I get my spy exposure that I want, right? I needed this to get what I want. This downdraft. Okay, I, I obviously don't want this to head south, make new lows and bleed out. That's not what I'm positioning for, right? I needed, I needed some kind of breather here for me to get uh, involved in S&P 500 exposure. Otherwise, I would just have to rely on individual names and sweeper activity, right? So I'm going to get that now. I got that now. I'm already in the process, right? And if we can find a way to hang in here, even if it's just range bound, right? And that's what I'm making a bet that with hedge funds short and Sharpies net long, that chances are we're gonna hang in there at the least. Um, then as sweepers start to pick off names, you know, that's where that's when the fun fun can start. That's when the fun can start. Because I don't know about you guys when. I like swinging names. That's that's my thing, you know. Like I play, I like playing the overall market um, for squeezes and such. But that's the extent of it, you know. That's the extent of it. Yeah, ZTS we were talking about is is one of the names that has caught, you know, even quality action, even quality action. Um, but it's just, you know, it's just one name. You know, it's just one name. Right? We spoke about like Intuit, right? Caught some big boy action. But, you, you know, I don't know if you guys have been around when sweepers start to get aggressive and do some buying. Okay? They, I mean, this is the total opposite. You know, you see buying, like look what they did in the commodity names. Just look what they've done in energy and commodities, right? You see the action in these names? It just, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And I'm not even talking about now. Forget about now. These things have all went bananas, you know? I'm talking about, you know, several weeks back when they were hitting CLF, Cleveland Cliffs, one after the other, right after the other, right? Or started with an Alcoa or Devon Energy, or uh, FCX or CCJ, yeah, it, it was just bananas. You know, and these are names that really don't catch that type of action. You know, they don't catch the action some of these tech names catch, you know, or the semis catch or anything like that. You know, even gold miners, I'm, listen, and, and that's something we got to keep in mind because I'm telling you, it's going to be a problem a la 99, 2000, 
where, where, where you're looking in one direction for opportunities, flow, and waiting on that, and you're going to turn old and gray before it comes. You understand? Because it might not come there for a while, right? Like I was telling you guys, coming out of the tech bubble in 2000, everybody was waiting for opportunities in those tech names at a discount. And in the meantime, they were bombing the rest of the market. And there was some big money to be made. But there were a lot of folks who had no idea what was going on. You know what I mean? No idea what was going on. So we could be in that same environment very easily, very easily. Now you're going to get squeezes in tech, even if we're in that environment, like, we, like we've seen, okay? And you're going to get breathers in these new regime commodity names, like, we, like we've seen from time to time, okay? Um, but that's all they will be, right? The total opposite of what we've been seeing some of you, that's all you've seen since you started trading. You know, that's all you've seen is buying growth in tech and you never buy, nobody would buy out COA. If you're trading over the last five to eight years or even even longer than that, people would laugh at you if you were telling them you were buying out COA, right? Over an AMD, over a Twilio or any of that stuff. Nobody wanted to buy out COA. But, you know, there were times where the market shifts, the cycles turn, and things get back in favor, that we're out of favor. And, it, you know, it lasts for a while. So we, we have to keep that in mind. And I, I, I think we, we have a good, um, a good setup on that front where you got a couple of things that if, if – when they turn, like we mentioned, the uh, Russia, Ukraine, if something turns out right there um, and energy sells off and commodities sell off, you will see, right? Into that sell off, may not be that day, but into that correction, you're either going to see them come in and aggressively buy that dip or ignore it and buy PayPal Square and everything else, right? And that's what I mean. I think that's going to be a telltale sign of what may be lying ahead for us as far as the market's concerned. You know? And it's, it's a pain in the ass. You want, you want that to, you want, you don't want that, you're tired of that, and you want high correlated markets where if the market goes higher, um, the majority of stocks will go higher. You need everything to go down together it doesn't have to be for a long time, but you need a nice rinse where everything sells off together. There's nowhere to hide. And then you get that capitulation bottom and then everything comes back. You understand? The initial rally out of that, everything will rally. But unless you get that, you're gonna, we're going to continue to be in this type of market where there's, there's that risk all over the place, right? That's the risk right now in commodity names that people who are bullish commodities are not seeing, right? It's going to bite them in the ass at some point. You can't tell me it's never going to bite them in the ass, right? There's going to be, I mean, Mosaic can't do this for another six months without a legitimate washout, right? You guys agree or no? Right? There's got to be, at the least, there's got to be something like this. At the least, right? At the least. You know, either through time or price. Right? It could keep going here for a bit, right? We've seen that in software names. We've seen that in the, in the crappiest of crap, SPAC names. But at some point, the longer it goes without a breather, you're going to get them, they're going to, they're going to kick the bulls in the teeth. And that's the risk you, you have here buying these things here, right? If you own Mosaic here, like Cal, where's Cal? There he is, right? If you've been buying Mosaic early on, because that's what you were, you know, that was your thesis initially, and you have this as cushion, you don't give a shit, right? 
If you're in calls, you roll them. If you're in equity, you got cushion, right? You pick a price where you stop yourself out and lock in your gain and case closed. So you're, you're not worrying about that. You could stay bullish for as till you turn purple in the face. But as far as new, new money, new risk, right? New positions, there's a lot of risk by mosaic up here without some sort of breather, right? If you're bullish, you want a breather as soon as possible. Right? Because the quicker it comes, the smoother it'll be. This thing, forget it, these stocks are nuts, Damien. I these stocks are nuts. Like Al Alcoa, this thing was sterile. You know, I, I never thought in a million years this thing could move like this. It's crazy. Crazy. And you know, guys, it, it doesn't have to be the run doesn't have to be over. By no means does it have to be over, you know. But there there are corrections. Like even energy, you know, here, even energy, right? Same thing here, right? Okay, even though it doesn't look like much if you're not in it, okay? If you're aggressively putting new money to work here, right? Especially option, which a lot of you play, okay? So you're picking the time as well as whether it's gonna go up or not, this, is like crude going to zero if you're in coals, right? Same shit. You're gonna lose the same amount of money. So that's the risk in a lot of these um, these places right now, these commodity places. You know, so there's there's nothing there's nothing easy there's nothing easy right now until unless we see um, they start you know start to buy new things. Uh, but that's again, I can tell you what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing, right? I'm building a um, s p 500 position i'm pretty much there i got a little more to add which i'm probably going to do over the short term i'm going to try to hold out to next week just because this is a bullshit week um option expo and short week and all that you know i want to give i want to give some uh, wiggle room i want to give some wiggle room uh, but once i'm done with that uh my focus will be on individual names and i need to see them buying new names i, I i'm convinced we're going to see action. I really am, guys. I really am. Um, but from what I like, from what I see in front of us, like just in price action and damage done, it, it looks like shit out there. No, and everything else, it looks like shit. It really does. But they always look like shit before they bottom. I guess they always look like shit. They always look like shit. And and breath too is not as bad as you think. There were there are some there's green out there. Even when the market's down, there's green out there. Um, another spot we've been talking about, right? I don't know who's in it, who's not. The gold miners, you know, they're slow, like a lot of the things we say before they go parabolic. But you know, you bought if you bought the leader, look at you right now. <laughs> Newmont Mining. What's wrong with that? All right, look at that. Um, they keep buying this Barrett Gold. Okay. Yeah. It, and, and these how they, they all start. This is like how Alcoa started. This is how that um, EQT started, right? They lull you to sleep. And you turn your head and you're at new highs, right? And then you go to sleep some more and you don't look at it. And all of a sudden you look at the chart and you say, what the, f when did that happen? That's what's going on in these commodity metals and these new regime plays. Um, and even some of the more speculative names, what's that name they were buying, that gold miner they were buying uh, the last couple of days? It's with an S. I get it confused. There's two of them. SSRM, right? That's it. Yeah, that's it. You know, these, right? They they look a lot, they look a lot better than all the other shit we're looking at. Right? Again, even the more speculative ones. You don't you want to get too clever, right? Because the more speculative you go, um, you take on the risk. Like if you want to make a gold miner bet, right? We discussed this. You 
you want to play new month mining, right? If you want to get paid, if the go, if you're right on gold miners, you want to buy Newmont, right? Or or Barrick, G O L D. Okay. Now, if you bought those, right, or if you traded them and you're out of them, and now you're looking for laggards, you're you're looking towards the underbelly, then you know you start looking at these SSRMs, HL, Puff Puff Pass, right? All these guys. Um, but you know, if you you want to make the money off the group, and you're not buying, you know, you're not playing the ETF, um, you you want to always go leaders when it comes to these groups because um, the laggards they take time, they take time, but they do look good. Ponytail, oh KGC, yeah, there's been action in that. All of them, cow, all of them. There's been a lot of action in these things from Newmont, Newmont Barrick. And SSRM, which they've been bombing, um, all the way down to HL. I haven't even looked at this recently, but this HL, a lot of buying with time in this HL, a lot. You know, so they they they've been putting on exposure in in all these things. Now this this is not going to benefit the overall market one bit. You know what I mean? This is not like they, they can rally with the overall market. They can. They definitely can. I've seen it before. I'm telling you. Um, but yeah, you know, them pushing higher when the semis are getting hit over the head, yeah, that's not gonna do much for the indices. That's obvious. You know, and look like today you had the Russell Green, right? Somebody explain the Russell to me. Well, it doesn't matter, it's near new lows anyway. Maybe that's why. But Anybody figure out the Russell yet? Has anybody got the Russell figured out? Because I don't have the Russell figured out. Anybody know what what makes the Russell go up or down? I mean, what do these stocks do today? You know, an, another thing um, I'm not crazy about that that we saw more more so in the rally um, than we're seeing now, which was telling us squeeze. But again, it's a good thing, right? It's a good thing. I want to keep saying that because if this market would have ripped right from here, I don't know about you guys, I wouldn't have shit on. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have any exposure. So what good would I have done? I would have to trade tactically anyway. So this is a blessing in disguise, whether it works out to be bullish or not. You know, if you know you were bullish here, this is what you wanted. You didn't want this thing to just keep going like this. All right. So I don't know why I went to that point. But um, the point I was making was this rally. You guys remember what they were sweeping up in this rally? Do you remember the GameStop, AMC, all the Jabroni stocks? Do you remember all those stocks? They were bombing. I remember like AMC went bananas, right? The flow one day. That's not leading us out, my friend. Space, oh, every shit on the board was getting lit up. That's not going to lead us out of this. I'd be shocked. I could be wrong, but I'd be shocked if that, those are the names that lead us out of this. You know, now that you have some quality names that have been sold off to, I'd really be shocked if those things let us out. Like, think about it. The, the smart money out there, they, they call a bottom. They're going to buy space over like, uh, yeah, Texas Instruments or something like that. You know what I mean? So that was another, um, again, just a sign that it was short squeeze. It was pretty obvious that this was short squeeze. That's why a lot of people and, and bears were calling this strictly a bear market rally. Okay. Um, but there, here, let, let's look at, let's look at some of the things. So you guys, again, you don't have to take my word for it. You, you see it here, right? You see it with the stuff I'm showing you. Okay. Every hedge fund exposure, hedge fund beta you look at, right? All the polyopatia names. That's, that's not a good sign, say, right? You don't want to see that. Um, every hedge fund 
uh, positioning or exposure reading you look at. Okay, now let's let's put things into perspective here, right? That green line is showing you the neutral line. Okay, and again, it's not a button that goes off that hints the algos to start buying when hedge funds officially get net short, right? So don't get too cute, all right? But they got, they dipped into the dark side into this yank here, okay? That was officially when they first dipped into the dark side. And then they've been, you know, hugging the neutral line since, all right? Okay, so hedge funds, they didn't just get short here. They've spit up exposure from being all in near the highs here, okay? And now have no exposure and are net short here. So think about that for a second, okay? Here's where they're all in long, right? You see that, right? And look, market went down, up, down, up, new highs. The hedge funds are going to be right. But eventually, they can't buy anymore, and they have when they have to sell, it's going to weigh on prices, right? And that's what's happened. And now they have been short, and actually, they didn't add into this rally. They've sold into this rally, even though they have nothing to sell. They shorted, I should say. All right, so you get that catalyst, you get that trigger where they need to do this again, okay? Now, not even that extreme. I'm talking about they need to start putting on even some of that exposure back on, and the, you're going to see it in the, you're going to see it supportive in the price action, right? So what you're going to see is instead of this, because they're selling every rip, right? You're going to see this, because they're looking to buy dips because they need to put on exposure, right? That's the thesis behind it. That's the logic behind it, I should say. Anybody have any questions? Because I get questions on this, right? You, you understand the signal there? Okay, it, it's got nothing to do with price action, right? It's got nothing to do with the market went up or down, um, like some of the other sentiment indicators out there that we look at. Uh, where the market goes down, usually it, it gets more bullish. This is real positioning, right? That we're looking at at extremes, okay? what It's not saying um, Tepper's not long. It's saying as a whole, hedge funds have no equity exposure right now. They're more short than long. Uh, Cal, don't even try to handicap what they're thinking. I've been there, done that. It makes no sense sometimes. I'm being dead straight with you, Kyle. It makes no sense. Zero sense a lot of times. You can't figure it out, right? You can't figure it out. But what I've seen, and you guys have seen the chart. I don't know if I have one here. You go back in time um, and you, know, you see some major bottoms where they've remained not as we call them non-believers, right? You, we use that term a lot. They remain net short as the market moves against them initially, and then have to chase late, like they did here. Look where, look where they got in. You see that date where they got maxed in here, where they did this. Okay, late this late last year. is when they did that. No? And you know, it was a process to get them all the way over here. And it finally did over here. Okay, so that, this is why I, I'm long. This is, this is why I started buying um, S&P 500 calls. All right. That's why. Um, this and this, okay? This is the other side. Um, you got this. So these are um, spec speculators in futures. 
okay? I call them the riffraff. This is us in the futures market, all right? And um, you can see, you know, they, they get along, they get excited, right? It doesn't mean the market topped out. They've been right at times. Uh, but here's COVID. Where's the, here's the zero line. Okay. So they were net short. Okay. And you see right where, right here, you could see where the, uh, I can't draw a straight line, but you know what I'm trying to do here. Oh yeah. That's a good one right there. Look at that. Okay. Um, so they got short into the weakness. Okay, I don't know. Honestly, I don't. I didn't pay attention to just the riffraff as much um, during that time. I was paying attention to the combined signal. So they may have caught a little of the downside. I'm not sure. Uh, don't take that line because that's not a good line. Uh, but you can see, right? They stayed net short, even as the market went against them. You know, even as the market went against them. Okay, and then eventually. As they get excited, they add to the long, especially when the Fed rigged the game. All right. Now, here you could see into this yank, they're net short again. Okay. So you got hedge funds and the riffraff on the dark side. All right. And the more conservative money, which is considered the, the, the smart money on the street. Yeah, I guess this chart gets the job done too. All right. Why does this chart come out like this? It looks like shit. Uh, here's the zero line here. Okay. And you could see, right, how aggressively hedged they were. Even as the market was pushing higher here, this last leg, they used it as an opportunity to put on more hedges. Because that's what they do more than them being bearish. Okay, if people are getting more bullish and a market continues to go higher, they put more hedges on to protect the downside, right? Then you get, finally the market, you get a rinse and you can see, uh, you can't see it on this chart, you could see how aggressive they were in taking these hedges off. They came from, they came a long way. This is the indicator. I want to show you the uh, net number. Yeah, of course, I won't find it when I want to find it, right? Oh, maybe it's uh, sharp hedges. Hold on. But you can see how aggressive. Here it is. Okay. So this definitely was aggressive. Hedging, right? Big hedge position into the highs. And, and they, they were hedging early. Okay. They were early without a doubt. Hence why I was really conservative, right? You guys know I wasn't swing trading anything. One of the main reasons why is because as the market was going higher and everyone is bullish, okay, these guys were doing the opposite, right? And managing their risk. Okay, so here, I mean, how many weeks was it? Three weeks or two? It was two weeks, I think, right? So into, into the squeeze. It wasn't into the lows. Into the squeeze is where they really got aggressive and started to. And here's the thing, too, um, which is important to me. Not only did they take off some of their hedges, they took them all off. Right? They took them all off. They took them all off, right? So here, here's the COVID lows, okay? They, they weren't as aggressively hedged, uh, but they were hedged into the COVID lows. And they took them off and got long. Here, late 2018. And you can see here and here, those times were a little different too, 2015, 2016. All right, this is the net position. We look at it in indicator form too, anyway. 
All right. But that, that that's it, guys. That's the old, right there. What I just showed you is the only reason, and I'm being dead straight with you, that I'm bull, that I I'm a bull. Because <laughs> I on my own, I couldn't. All my, there's nothing nothing else for me that I could be bullet. The price action looks like shit. The flow looks like shit. I don't know what these guys see. Okay, but it could be simp as simple as this. Everybody else knows that it looks like shit out there. You understand? I know, you know, hedge funds know, riffraff know. That's why everybody's either short or has no exposure on. You understand? If, if the market, that's a good question. So what will be important to watch going forward, okay, as far as the signal from here, if you see how we're getting a pull here now, okay, if into weakness, they get a, aggressively just put hedges back on, which is rare, but it, again, it's, it's not an indicator, it's positioning, so it's possible, that would be a red flag. You know what I mean? That would be a red flag, okay? What we would, ideally what we want to see is as this market either chops around or is weak, test the lows or whatever the case, we want to see them do one of these jammies. You understand? Get more aggressive. Okay, so those those would be the, the two major signals to look at from this point. Okay. Into if we squeeze, okay, if this market starts to rally and we see them put some hedges back on like this, that's normal. That's nothing to uh to get concerned about or, or even pay attention to, to be quite honest. You know, because you look, uh, that's here. See, as we rally, they start to take off that exposure and put some hedges back on. You understand? That's their job is to hedge positions. That's what their job is to do. Their job is not to get naked long and take risk. That's why we use it as a signal. Right? Their job is not to do what we do and roll the dice in calls and take advantage of upside. Okay, they, re they manage risk. And when they do this, they, from my experience, okay, as long as I'm in the game, and this game, that's the beauty of the game. You never know, right? That's why there's no guarantees, nothing certain, anything can happen. But from my experience, the only time they do this is either one, everybody is bearish and they're the only ones taking the other side or two, they have something up their sleeve, right? They have their privilege to more information than we have, obviously. So they know of something that we're not paying attention to. But those are the only reasons that in my opinion, they they would do something like that. Now, is there some exception we can concoct? That's a, a possibility. Uh, you know what I mean? And it has some lower. Of course, anything's possible. But like I said, you want to you know you want to look at this game and 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 overthink it like that. You'll you'll drive yourself nuts. If you got long and lean bullish off any of these signals. As a position trader, swing trader, you made a lot of money. Yeah, everybody could be wrong, Mark. That's what that that's the point I just made. You know what I mean? Um, like I give you an example where they were wrong on the other, not again, wrong is not the right word to use, okay? But where they were concerned and they saw something that they weren't concerned about anymore. The election, okay? Is that here? What year was that? Here we go again. But anyway, the election, into the election, okay? I think it was like a couple of weeks before the election, they went to hedged, okay? So they were long and they aggressively went to oh, a hedge position. 
I can show it here. I know where I can look. Hold on. November 2016. Can I see it on here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So you see that? They aggressively hedged. You could see, right? And they, you can't make it out here, but they aggressively put on a hedge a couple of weeks ahead of the election. The market went into a little breather, if you remember. Let me show you on the market chart. It'd be a lot easier so you could get an idea. Okay. Um, but this would be your definition of wrong, Mark. Uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't look on this side wrong because they hedge. They're wrong often when they hedge. If you look at them being hedged and the market keeps going higher, that happens often with them because that's what they're supposed to do that. Let me show you here. Hold on. All right, but I, I think I'm giving you an example of what you're asking here. That's why I'm doing this. Hold on. I think that might answer your question. All right. At the yeah, yeah, this is the election? No, no, that's the Bazooka Joe lows. No, the Biden election. What the, 2016, when was the Biden election? Jesus Christ, and I'm looking at 2016, not the Trump um, win. Jesus, here, this has got to be it. What year is this? 2020, thank you. I'm looking too at 2016. Shows you how dizzy I am. All right. So here, okay. Into this. Nope. Scratch that. Into this. They started to get aggressively hedged, right? The market went into this double bottom. Okay. Into the election. Here's the election right here. Okay. They weren't long yet. So they were, they were still net hedged into the election. And then the election happened. You had this big move. I don't know if you guys remember right after the election. And they took off all their hedges. You understand what I'm saying now? So... They were concerned about the election, but something happened, right? I guess Biden won. I don't know. And they weren't concerned anymore. Okay? So that's one um, scenario where they had to adjust quickly. On As far as the, um, the long side is concerned, since, since I'm in the game following them, I don't remember um, them ever adjusting a position aggressively like that. Um, I remember 2011, uh, they were a little early. I showed you guys members, if you remember that chart. Um, it, it's a little different than now, because now you had the rally. I think it throws things off whack a little bit. Uh, but 2011, this is how they played it. Okay, they got long. Oh, no, no, you're right. They got long here. But yeah, they got long here. I think they might have been a little early um, here. And so it was after, before rally. You understand? So that's a bad example. That's not what you're looking for. I don't think, Mark, from what I remember, there wasn't any any instant. I'll give you another thing I remember. 2015 Brexit. Okay, we went over this too, if you members remember. Oh, how many times do I remember? 2015 Brexit, was that it? I'm almost positive. Where's Brexit? I'll show you what they did Brexit. Here, here, this is it, right? Oh, 2016, good call, you're right, you're right. Summer 2016. Here's Brexit. Okay. So this time, okay, this had a little different wrinkle too. Because that's, that's why, you know, we're looking at prior scenarios. You know, you, that's the problem with us. We're always looking in the past and, and the present to try to predict the future. It's, 
You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense, but let's do it for entertainment purposes only. Um, here, they got long here. Okay? So this wasn't even a big dip. Okay? Market was more choppy than anything else, right? They took off their hedges and got naked long here. Okay? You see this move? As, as we rallied here, they took off some of that long. So the indicator did something like that, like we're seeing now, okay? Because the market rallied. Brexit hit, okay? So now, if you play off that Sharpie signal, you got run over here. You know, you're not happy. They went, boom, and got even more net long into that. You understand? So, Mark, what you're asking, they, they could have, because of Brexit, they could have just put hedges right back on, right? They didn't. They bought that even more aggressively. So since I've been following it, um, they haven't done that, Mark. So, again, I, that doesn't predict what they're going to do in the, in the future. I know you're not asking that. You're just wondering if they ever did in the past. Since I'm following it, Mark, no. I haven't seen anything like that yet. All right. This, what, what's different about um, this scenario, okay, um, and a lot of us were frustrated about, uh, that's why this dip is a blessing. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a blessing, okay? Whether it works out or not, it's a blessing. Because what's different about this um, se setup, because of the lag, Right. So in other words, we get the info on Friday. OK, which tells us what they've done from what is it? Tuesday to Tuesday. Right. OK. We get Sharpies on Friday, right before the bell. OK, so what was different this time, usually when they make an aggressive move like they did this time around, the market is atrocious. Usually there's capitulation when they get that aggressive. So it would be into something like this, where they start taking off hedges here and then go boom, max long. Okay, that's usually how they play it. Here, it didn't work that way. Here, they took off hedges and they took off more hedges and they took off more hedges and they got max long. You understand? So I'll show you what I mean by that. So that's what was annoying. Usually we have the weakness to buy into and allows you to be more patient. Here, by time they got net long, is that when they got net long? When did they get net long, uh, Hussein? Do you know the date exactly? Maybe that's what he's saying. Oh, okay, perfect. That's what I was asking for. March 25th, perfect, okay? So right here, that's what Hussein is saying, right here is where we got the signal that they were net long futures, okay? That's what was strange about this. That's what was the pain in the ass about this, okay? Now, if we got a breather right there, like if we even just chopped around there, it wouldn't have been that bad because I think we could have bought that and we probably had some room for another leg higher. These couple days of follow through here through the Niner lit up everything. You know what I mean? Short term sentiment was so lit by that point that it was a disaster. Um, so you kind of you needed this now. OK, you needed this, even though if you got long here which I bought there, that was a spot I bought, okay? But, you know, I need this to take advantage of uh, because of how, you know, overheated this was by that time. So th this is what it looks like, you know? But that, that's a perfect example of why you can't look in the past to plan the future. It's impossible. Here, okay? So right here is where we got the long signal on March 25th, that Hussein saying. 
So look what they did prior to the one week, two weeks prior. You understand? From a, a huge hedge position to where they were. And it was part of the rally. Yeah, it's only, um, no, they, they do it in, in futures, um, not just index futures, commodities and everything. Uh, but index futures um, is what we follow mostly. Yeah, I tell again, I, I'm being dead straight with you. I, I really, I have no effing clue. I'm being honest with you guys. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I have a clue. I don't have a clue. Okay. But like Cal, you're saying, my gut is that this thing is as volatile as it is right? Which feels, it feels like crashy. It feels rippy at times, but net net, it's just one huge mosh pit until something clicks, you know, until something clicks. That's I, what I think is. And the reason I say that is because it's going to be, it's possible, but you need almost um, a liquidity event to get things really going to the downside from here, in my opinion, because of how players are positioned. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Like you, you're going to need, though, like, I'm not saying it doesn't have to necessarily be as bad as 2008, but you're going to need a, an overpowering force where the market gods are going to be like, listen, you know, what are you going to do? Hedge funds and riffraff are going to make money on the downside. And because everything else is blowing up, you understand? 2008, hedge funds made money shorting stocks. I got news for you. Anybody who was shorting made money in 2008, but they got obliterated in everything else because everything caught fire. You understand? So if you were short stocks, yeah, you made some money in stocks, but your real estate went to zero, right? You understand? So that that's, I think, and anything is possible, but I think that's what um, is probably what, what it would take where positioning is right now for this thing to fall apart here, to completely fall apart. We get short. Oh, you're right, GD. Friday is good Friday. Monday. Shit. God. That's right. Yeah, I don't, they don't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't look good. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, again, I hate to sound like a broken record. If Sharpies weren't that long side, all this shit, I would be concerned about. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be putting on spy exposure into it. I'm being honest with you. I wouldn't be doing it without the Sharpie signal. I'm being honest with you. I wouldn't be doing it. You know, I would have, you know, this is not, this doesn't look good. Now, again, this didn't look good when Sharpies got long last time either. You understand? Nothing looked good. Manhattan, everybody was walking around like zombies because of COVID, right? It was a ghost town. So it, it never looks good. But, yeah, I'm being straight with you guys. I just... Sometimes you could see something, you know, like sometimes it will be the flow or um, you see it in the price action where things are outperforming and things are starting to look constructive, right? I remember like late 2018 um, when the market really started to sell on top of Sharpie getting long, things were holding up underneath the hood a little better than usual. Yeah, this, I don't see... As far as risk on, I just, I don't see anything. You, am I, do you guys see anything that's constructive here? What, what looks constructive? Here? And how about the Fed, the Fed scenario? It almost looks too easy for further downside. I'm not going to lie to you. No? I mean, the Fed is basically telling you the market's going down. 
They're basically telling you the market's going down. So obviously there's going to be, you know, sentiment's not going to be too high. Yeah, I, I agree, Mark. That's what I, re, I really feel like the evidence I have in front of me. I really think that's what we're looking at. But the word chop is misleading, okay? Because on the way down in that chop, it feels horrible. And on the way up, it feels really bullish. You understand? Like, look at this here, okay? When over here, when we're talking about a little breather and possibly, you know, a range, okay? It doesn't feel that bad when you're calling for it over here, right? But if you're sitting through it with some long exposure, right? With the type of moves we're seeing now, right? A percent every day, like, no, I mean, the liquidity out there, I cracked a joke, right? Brainerd was talking again at 12 o'clock and we were rallying ahead of it, right? Liquidity is so abysmal, right? That Brainerd could have sneezed, done anything, burped, and we could have sold off 50 handles. Like that's the type of market we're in right now. And right, and farted, right? That's what I said, not burped, farted. And it doesn't really mean anything, right? If, you're, if your thesis is we're in a range, okay? This is part of your plan, right? All this price action we're seeing really doesn't change it. It really doesn't change it. You know, it really doesn't change it. So, no, I, I cracked a joke, Cal. I said Brainerd could fart and we can sell off 50 handles. Um, when she was talking before. That's what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. But you, you know what I mean? Like, um, it's kind of like we, everybody knows this already, Ed. No, we all aren't. It's almost like we're tired of it. How, how much this is out there. You know, like it really, it's got to be something else that the market has not priced in yet. And that's what I mean. If you got like a liquidity event, you know, I mean, spreads are tightening, not to the point where anybody would get concerned yet, but, you know, you have a blow up of some sort, you know, you could get some selling, but I think even that selling would be viable, you know, so if, let's say you get crashing and, the, and futures, you got a flash crash, I think that's the entry, you know, so, but it, listen, the bottom line is usually off a Sharpie signal, it's, it's nice and easy because usually off a Sharpie signal, you're here, okay? You're here. There's no waiting, you understand? Any down tick, you, you, if you're looking to build a spy position, you know, you put it to work. Every down tick, you want it to stay here. This time it was different because you, know, you had a, a big move. You got a lot of room here now, right? That's a lot of room. So yeah, yeah, like how much do I buy here? I gotta wait. Do I buy a little more here? So that's why I've been, it's been multiple ads for me. You understand? I, I bought, I had a little exposure to begin with. I bought some off the Sharpie signal. I bought some last week. I bought some today. You know, kind of spread it out type of thing. That's what I've been doing. I, rather than try to handicap it too much because I, I, I don't know, guys. I really don't know. If I did, I wouldn't be talking to you guys. Yeah, kind of, Ed. Kind of. But um, you could say that now, you know, dollar cost averaging into weakness because we have uh, some weakness. What I was really concerned about, Ed, is if we didn't get that and we started to head higher, I don't know how I would have played it. What am I going to do? Chase this now? You know what I mean? I would have been handcuffed. I would have been completely handcuffed. Well, what would you guys do? You know, Hussein, what would you do? If, if the Sharpie signal we got, like Hussein saying here, right? I think it was this day of the seven here on that Monday. Okay. So let's say you bought a little there. Okay. And now this thing just, Melt it up because hedge funds are short. Uh, CTAs have no, 
What do you do? I think you start paying up. No, I'm saying, well, if the Sharpie signal, you want to get bullish and put on exposure. What do you do? I, I had trouble chasing that. I can't do that. Because then you get caught in something like this and it really hurts. Yeah, you got you, you gotta have that, you gotta have some sort of plan. You have to. You know, you have to. You have to. So that's why, guys, and listen, I know that's why we're it's hard for me to tell, you know each and every one of you how to play it because everyone, maybe, you, you know, you don't have the account to add in different increments, you know, maybe you're looking to add an old one spot, but, you know, because of this rally, it was tricky to add in one spot. You know, what are you going to do? Honestly, if it was all one spot, you kind of had to buy on the 25th and you'd be patient, you know, you got to have time. The Sharpie signal's not, you're not buying two weeks out or front month of the Sharpie signal. It's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it, you know? So you're going to have some time. Um, and if you don't have enough time, if we get a snapback rally, which is possible, right? We're in a range and then adjust, roll out for more time if you're concerned about it. Yeah, July's fine, Mark. July's fine. All the new buys... Um, I, I started with July and now I'm going August, uh, but you can even roll Mark. If when, you know what I mean? We get a rally or whatever. You can roll at that point. If you feel you need more time to be comfortable. You know, and it's not, it's not about um, having enough time to wait for a rally. It's, it's more about being able to sit through a little mess and then, if and when the rally comes, you can sit on the rally and not sell the first rip. You know what I mean? Because th these type of markets, like look here, right? This could be one of these instances where we do this, even if we're in a rally and to sit through that, you're gonna need time if we're doing something like that. That's why like 2011, I was giving you guys the example. It feels a little similar to that um at the start but you know that that's all it feels similar not not anything else about it but i'll show you like 2011 right here and you know we're in a different time 2011 you had the fed obviously at your back here they're against us all right so 2011 you had that's not it that's 2010. Here it is. See this? So you had the low, then you had this rip, huge rip off the lows. And then you see this? Right? And then we had it higher. So this is kind of where we're at right now. Right? Yeah, a lot of these things have the same patterns, right? Who's saying when they eventually bottom, they all, usually these major bottoms look, look alike. But this, this feels similar. Again, maybe it doesn't even look similar to you guys. It feels similar to me uh, just because you had this big rip here. Um, that this was crazy too, because this drop in 2011, I don't know if you guys were playing, this felt like a crash. It was nuts. Um, and then you see the sloppy bottom here? Look at that, how range bound this was. Then ultimately you tested here and broke a little and then it set off a vicious move through a niner. And then, you know, think about it, right? Think about what this feels like after that rip. Kind of like where we're at right now. You know, so let's see, let's see if we get this type of a snapback um, possibly next week or whatever. And now um, we downside niner. Yeah. Today was a downside niner. Downside niner. Yeah, we got one here today. We got one here. Right there. So crazy, a couple several of them, right? You had one here, you had one here, 
and you had one here. And just one upside liner here. So yeah, there, we should see even tactical buyers show up here. We should within the next, you know, by next week. Yeah, it's a exhaustion signal that's bullish, this one. So in other words, to the downside, this is where you should see sellers show some signs of getting tired. You understand? Uh, so kind of here, I'll show you the last one. Can you, uh, let me hear. So you see this one here? Oh, both of them. You had one here, nine. And that set it off. And then this one reversed and went green that day. Um, and there was one. Oh, no, that's that's it, right? Three. Oh, no, here. And this one, too. This one, too. Sharpies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sharpies, Niners. And, you know, we might get some of the other sentiment stuff that we lost um, here start to line up, which would be really cool. You know, I don't know if we have enough time here. Um, the Niner might, you know, work some of that off. But buyers should, yeah, this week is uh, option and expiration short week. So it wouldn't shock me um, if we were sloppy here. You know, this is a sloppy week. Tactical sentiment is bullish. Yeah, that's bullish. Um, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me we were sloppy the remainder of the next couple of days. Uh, but next week, we should see uh, tactical buyers show up, you know, even for a, a couple of days of upside. Uh, again, if we don't, you know, it might be there's something else out there at play that um, is really putting the kibosh on things. Let's see, what did credit spreads do today? Anybody know? Let's see. Oh, they didn't do anything today. Today was a weird day, right? Wait, wait a second. We were up huge this morning, weren't we? We were up huge this morning. Wasn't the NASDAQ up like 2% this morning, or am I wrong? I don't even know what days these feels like 10 days in one. Yeah, on the CPI, right? I keep forgetting that. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, it, it could be, it could be, I think more so um a blow up because of uh, what's going on in the bond market, more than the equity market. Right? That's that's what could be going on. Um, because you haven't seen anything like this in the bond market in quite some time. Here, um, I'm going to post the, the credit default swap uh, indicator. It didn't do anything today. See? So you don't want um, no. This updates um, at night, Hussein. The evening. I think this is updated. If not, yeah, this is definitely updated. Yeah, yeah, this is updated. Um, so you know, we really don't we don't want to see this again. That's for sure. You know, just we're just in a strange, crazy time. Um, the uh, corporate bond, what's that doing? Let's see, hold on. Let me see if the corporate bond, that, that hasn't been moving as much, the corporate bond one. Let's see, corporate bonds. Yeah, a little bit higher today. Corporate bonds uh, spreads. 
I'll blow it up so you guys can see. I'm just, you know, I'm, and it may be nothing. I'm dying to like, what the hell did Sharpie see that had them get that aggressive, you know? Yeah, it's hard for me to just believe that they were anticipating that a big squeeze like that coming. Yeah, like, um, see, look at that. That's the corporate bonds. So that's been lagging. No, this has been, this is not broken. These are corporate bonds and these are, the other one's credit default swaps. This is not broken. No, this is corporate bond spreads, not Sharpies. These are bond spreads. So this gives you an idea of, uh, you know, spreads are widening or tightening. Oh, you guys are talking to somebody else? Maybe you're not talking to me. Is the Sharpie indicator? Why is the Sharpie indicator broken? Why would the Sharpie indicator be broken? What, may, what would make you think it's broken though? I'm just curious. What would make you say it's broken? <laughs> Ed, are you serious or are you joking? Wait, 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 wait. You want to know why Sharpies are bullish and you're not? Is it seriously? Are you serious? Sharpies are always bullish when you're not. Always. <laughs> always. I guess I'm confused by a Katie. I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. You guys talking to me right now? Katie, who? Kate, Chris Katie? What's Katie got to do with it? Is this the same conversation? Because I'm lost in space right now. The world is bearish, yet Sharpies are long. Exactly. That's what they do. It would be broken if the world was bullish and Sharpies were long. Wait, Ed, Ed, Ed you want to buy? Wait, you want to get long? I'm, being, I'm not busting your chops here. I'm just being honest. You want to buy when everybody's bullish is when you feel comfortable? You, you know, you never, that's this, this whole game is, works that way. You know what I mean? This whole game evolves around that. A name of a Sharpie? No, no, they're, they're, they're the term, they're the, the real, what they're really called are commercial Hedgers. That's what that's what they call. If you um if you go sentiment trader on Twitter um posted a couple of things on it if you want to take a look recently.
Uh, he had a car. Yeah, Sharpie's a nickname I give him based off the uh, gambling. The gambling term, Sharpies. Uh, dealers, sometimes they're referred to as dealers. You know what I mean? Sharpies is a slang term like uh, for gamblers in Vegas. The sharp, sharp money. Yeah. Wait a year, well, all right. All right, so guys, I mean, that's it, right? It's a little tricky time, uh, but that's the story. You know, I'm being dead straight with you guys. I agree. I agree with whoever is bearish or not bullish. I totally understand and see exactly what you see. Um, and that's what's kind of got me feeling a little, oh, well, actually being actionable bullish, right? Um, but it looks like shit out there, no doubt about it. You know, and, and listen, could look like shit for a little bit more time, uh, but that may be where the opportunity is. I would feel a hell of a lot better. Um, you know, we got earnings to deal with now, but if if we started to see some real sweeper activity, buying some stuff, I just that that's the kind of the conviction um I would really, I really could use right now, you know. And I and I need and I would need because like I said I'm not going out there picking my own, the, my own names to to buy I don't even know which names to buy I have no clue even if I was going to pick my own stocks here I don't have the slightest clue the slightest clue you know the slightest clue of what I would buy the slightest clue. You know, what I'm talking, I'm talking about for like position purposes. Which like big tech? Uh, don't you think big tech? I guess, right? Like they would, I mean, they would have to rally. You would think though. I, I don't know, Doug. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We got earnings season two to deal with here. No, definitely. You got names at a discount. The semis too, some of the quality semis got beat up. So if things are going to turn, they're going to be involved, right? Yeah, they just keep sweeping those commodity names. But let's see. With individual names, we'll be a little bit patient, especially this week. This week's a bullshit week. Excuse my French. You know, this week's a garbage week. So let's see how uh, the bank earnings go and um, we'll take it day by day. We'll take it day by day. Lentil. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys. Enjoy the rest of the week. And I'll see you majority of you manana. Later.